Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program again with the fifth episode of my Point 22 playthrough. In this one I'm going to take this space probe, hopefully out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, and you can see I've built an asparagus stage rocket to do that. So anyway now I'm going to head to the launch pad and see how far we can get, hopefully we'll be able to transmit some interesting data back, and hopefully it'll be enough to unlock another point on the tech tree or two. So, we're here now and we're ready to go, all I'm going to do is throttle up and hit space, and hopefully this thing will make it uh, pretty far. The further it gets, the better, really. Uh, but with this asparagus staging, we should have plenty of delta V. So hopefully, you know, we won't be um, we won't be stuck in that regard. We should be able to get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence pretty easily. Uh, so I'm going to start my asparagus stage. Uh, sorry, I'm going to start my gravity turn quite late because I'm just going to burn straight out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, really. Uh, but I would like to have some time and mix, you know, do some experiments and get some data while I'm still in Kerbin's sphere of influence because it's just extra data, um, and you know, the more data the better, really. Because this thing, with its, um, you know, electric charge coming from solar panels, it will come back again, so we don't have to worry about that. We can basically just transmit as much data as we want, even if it's with diminishing return. So that's the next asparagus stage done now, and yeah, this is a lot more efficient than our last, uh, our last rocket. As always with asparagus staging, it's just um, a lot more efficient and a lot better. Uh, some people don't like using it though because they think it's unrealistic, but I don't know, I think that it's Kerbal Space Program, get over it is sort of my opinion. Uh, anyway, I'm going to start my asparagus, uh, no, <laughs> don't set it again, I'm going to start my gravity turn now and hopefully we'll get reasonably far with this stage. I think we probably could have landed on the moon in this episode, but I just think that launching a probe into space is a bit different and some, you know, changing it up a bit. And I'd also, if I want to land on the moon, I'd kind of like to bring a rover with me, to be honest, or, or something a bit more interesting than this. This is a bit boring, really, you know, and I'd only have a small command pod, I wouldn't be able to take three kerbals. And I don't have that much science stuff to take either. And I know, if, you know, it'd be better if there was more science stuff to take, because it'd mean that uh, I could get more uh, science for when, you know, when I do go. And I wouldn't want to go more than a couple of times, really. So, we're just accelerating and bringing up our apoapsis now. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get it reasonably. Yeah, I think, you know, we should we should be able to get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence with this stage, actually. We've still got tons of fuel. Uh, even though it's not accelerating that quickly, actually, because, you know, we're still under the... We're still pulling ourselves away from Kerbin, which is kind of difficult. But, uh, yeah, we should be okay. It's not rising too fast, though, unfortunately. Uh, actually, while I'm at it, I may as well gather some data and transmit it, so I'm going to observe my materials bay, and... Okay, let's transmit that then. And let's see how long it says that's going to take some... Okay, so 3.5 signs, not very much. We need about 100 signs from this mission if it's going to be a great success anyway. Uh, so let's... Transmit that, and let's do this as well, and transmit that. So yeah, we're not really getting very much science from this, because we've already observed all this area of the, you know, the system, basically. We want we want to get some science from somewhere a bit more interesting, uh, preferably somewhere, you know, outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. We could also do a moon assist, I guess, but I don't think that will actually be that efficient, and it's probably not worth doing. Yeah, the moon, yeah, the moon, moon's in the wrong position to do that, really. So we're just going to burn and burn and burn. And we do still have another, you know, two stages, essentially. This one's only a little stage, but because it's so lightweight, it actually should give us a reasonable amount of delta V. That was mainly for a couple of orbital adjustments once we're out of Kerbin sphere of influence, maybe. Uh, but it was, you know, it wasn't really to do very much. So let's just see what we can do from here. Our apoapsis is rising. 
it's not going too fast but it is rising and actually what I can do now is use physical time warps that's alt and then the normal time warp keys to do this a little bit faster uh, which is kind of useful so let's see where we can get with this then There we go, we're well out of Kerbin Sphere Influence, now I'm going to take off the physical time warp and put on the normal time warp. And once we get really far away, so we're nearly outside of Kerbin Sphere of Influence, I'd like to actually take another couple of samples of goo and things like that. So I'm going to observe the materials bay first. And uh, that's worth a bit more scientific wise, but it's only 20% of it that we actually get. Uh, because of you know we're transmitting it rather than sending it back so five signs there we go and let's see if we can observe the mystery goo as well transmit that that's worth four signs and 3.1 signs so it's diminishing return let's see whether we can yeah it's still worth a reasonable amount though so it's good to transmit all this data or as much data as we can back because we want as much science as we can have. So you can see we still got the same five data, but it was just worth a bit less, uh, which is unfortunate, really. Yeah, you can see it's just going down and down. Anyway, I think that's enough of that data because it's not really that useful. And is that us? I think that's us. Yep, we're out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. So. Let's see what we can do with this then. Hopefully we'll get some even more interesting... Oh yeah, so scientific value 275. That's a very large amount. So although we'll only get 20% of it, we should still get quite a lot from that. So that's going to be... 55 science. Not bad. Um, so I think what I'm going to... Oh, may as well do this with the goo as well, because that will give us more interesting data um, that's 110 you see and that's 40 percent we get from that I'll also do the same thing with this high over the sun so we've got two options from here I think we can either try and burn in towards the sun which is probably the most efficient one to do as our perhaps this is already quite low or we can try and burn and get further away from the sun and I think towards the sun is going to be more interesting and more useful so I'm going to burn towards the sun or you know burn retrograde so our parapsis gets lower basically so I'm just going to wait till I get to my apoapsis which is going to be in quite a long time and there we go let's see how low we can bring our parapsis with this fuel because if we can get some data from really close to the sun as well, that would be very interesting for the Kerbals, I'm sure. So this could take a while, and again I'm going to use the physical time warp to make sure that this happens reasonably quickly for you guys, so that you don't have to wait for... Uh, hours on end for me to get to this low parapsis. So I think though this will this will be really useful for the Kerbals if we can get a nice low uh, low parapsis because what that'll essentially let us do is see how much radiation comes off the sun and I presume that that is worth quite a lot um, that information. So I'd like to bring it under a million meters, really, but I don't know where is a really good low parapsis. But we're going to have to make another stage here. Whoa, okay, stop that. What just happened? I think SAS just died because we were in physical time warp. Oh, okay. Okay, the ship's off balance by a long way. Let's stop time warping there. And we've not got very much fuel either. Uh, so... Whoa, let's point retrograde. Come on. You can do this.
Come on. Perhaps this is a lot lower, but still I don't think it's going to be low enough. Unfortunately, I think um, we're going to have to burn a bit more gently if we want to uh, to make this burn reasonably efficient. And I'm basically just going to have to burn away the rest of this this fuel. And hopefully uh, we will still get a reasonably low parapsis. There we go, that's the fuel burnt away. And our parapsis is 2.4 million meters away from the sun. So if I cut the throttle now, I'm going to time warp a little bit. Actually quite a lot. And uh, keep doing scientific tests as I get varying distances away from the sun. So let's have a look then. Where's the sun? There it is. So let's try doing a test now then. See if it's anywhere different. So that's still the same. Um, we're getting the same data essentially. So it's you know not as uh, not as good. But hopefully once we get right to our parapsis like we are now. Hopefully it'll be some different data, but I don't know. It might be that it's just the same data over and over again. Yeah, it's the same data over and over again. But we can still observe the mystery goo, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll get plenty of uh, signs from telling them about the different amounts of radiation there are at varying distances from the sun. So this one's still giving us quite a lot of signs every time, even though it's only 20% of it that's actually getting through. So it's worth continuing, definitely. We're still getting 30 signs every time we do it, so I'm going to keep doing it. And uh, That's very interesting. Anyway, we're going to actually leave this probe out here, because it's... Um, you know, it's still useful, and uh, I guess it could be useful if we just need a few extra signed science points at some time, so I'm going to leave this out here, and hopefully uh, it will be useful in the future. But anyway, um, there's not really much else for it to do now, is there? So I'm just going to point it uh, either north or south, so that there's always a solar panel getting light, so it never runs out of power, and then uh, I'm just going to leave it, and that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to Go and have a look quickly at the science center first of all, see what we can unlock, see how much science we actually have now. But uh, hopefully it will be enough. So you can see here we've got 400 science, which is you know quite a lot actually from that one mission. I know we did uh, you know send back a lot of data, but I didn't think we'd have that much by the end of it. Anyway, um, now it's time to decide which of these is the most useful. So I'm gonna guess that I'm, I think this one's probably a good idea uh, first of all and that's gonna give us oh some storage containers well that's an interesting one actually I might want that uh, but let's have a look at this one first so we can we can only get uh, two of these because we have 320 signs that will cost us in total or we could get a couple of these as well and then one I think um, so that's an interesting decision. This looks like the most promising, actually. Uh, more command pods, more parachutes, RCS tanks, things like that. And this one looks good, too. Are there any... I think that's probably the most helpful one. So I'm going to research that one. And there's nuclear rockets there, and that's going to be even... That's going to be like mainsails and things, I guess. This one looks like it'll be good and this one looks like it'll be good too. So that's a difficult decision to make, but I think because we'll be able to go to the moon after this, or I'm hoping we will anyway, I think that um, this will be the most useful one because we can land three Kerbals on the moon. Uh, because even if we only have skippers, skippers are still pretty good engines if you ask me, and uh, with the proper application of, you know, 
asparagus staging and things like that, we should actually be able to make it quite far. And I'm just going to make sure there isn't anything essential for going to the moon that we need. Um, actually, these could be really useful as well. I'm thinking we might end up just landing one Kerbal on the moon then, and that'll be our first moon landing. And then the second time we might do a bit more once we've got science data from that. So the first time we go to the moon I think will be in the next episode, and that will be... I think it'll be one Kerbal, because then we can take some solar panels and things. Um, we could do... Yeah, we could do a bit more. It'd probably be a bit more useful to go to the moon in that episode. So, without any further ado, I think that I will unlock this part here. And what that's going to do is mean that we can generate more than enough power on the moon and store more than enough power uh, to transmit loads of data back with some samples and things back to Kerbin and hopefully that will give us enough to unlock a couple more of these sections and uh, maybe these two would be useful next time as well. So anyway guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and a favourite. If you have any suggestions or questions, then leave a comment down below. As I said, thanks for watching and have a nice day.